a fam- very close family friend and she made our wedding uh, the whole entire flow of our wedding very good Really, How you said she? Uh, I like really you had. Enjoyed. I like that you had a woman. Yes, first. a female. Nice. Yes. Okay. Uh, hmm. Yes, and we really enjoyed our uh, wedding. You know, she made it so nice. We understood the best part was like we understood everything. You know, like, uh, what are we doing? So she made it a very magical uh, event. You know, for us, both of us. So for me, it is very special. I okay. remember, like right now, also when I'm talking, I can literally feel, I can visualize each and every moment of our wedding. I, it's mm. still there. It's That'd be fresh beautiful. in my memories. Offspin Media Friends proudly presents. P.S. After I Love You, an Offspin original, created and hosted by Heer Khan. Hi, I'm back. Today, while I was sipping on my cup of black coffee, I was thinking about something I recently came across. Unfortunately, I don't know the name of the woman who said it, but she beautifully said, and I quote, There are many people you will love, and they are not necessarily the same people you will make a life with. Are you looking for a love story or a life story? Let that sink in. And on that note, let me introduce the guests of this episode, Kinjal and Amit, both of whom are entrepreneurs in different fields and have been married for 8 years they have made a life story their relationship is chill steady and free of the topsy turviness of intense romance let's talk to them so now i want to know the most interesting part of the podcast how did you guys meet i want to know all the gossip so we met through our common relative so uh, our case is it's like we are uh, we are we have we had an arranged marriage and we met through one of our cousin, uh, common uh, uh, mm. relatives mm. and yeah so we met uh, we, we got the proposal and then we met each other at her place and then from there it just you know i met him for the first time and after meeting him for the first time i felt like meeting him again and again and again which has never happened in nice. other cases like when i have met other boys before So right. that's how we met through a common relative, and she is very close to me. And like I could not trust anybody else but her. Like uh, because just meeting before meeting Amit, I was like I was done with the whole process of meeting boys for the arranged marriage case, like you know for the arranged marriage and all that. Mm. I was uh, a like a big no to meet uh, more people, people, more boys, and yeah. I want yeah, and I wanted to take a break. but my father was like uh, just you know it's only one then i won't insist you and then uh, and because it was through this auntie of ours uh, who to whom i was like i'm very close to so i felt like okay i'll just you know i this is the one like i'll meet mm. him and mm. if it goes well then good otherwise i'll take a break so just when you were but, about to give yeah, up you met him yes mm nice so, okay yeah and then what like what was the meeting like did you have a list of things to ask him list of questions was there a checklist how did that go uh, there was no particular checklist uh, so i always uh, wanted it to be very naturally yeah, there are a few basic things that everyone wants to ask like what do you do and all that so, but for me more important was like you know how uh, how do i feel after meeting a guy and uh, you know the energy the vibes of the person all that really mattered to me uh mm. yes uh peer education and all that is important fine but uh, more than anything else i just uh i felt like uh, you know i really like uh, loved his vibes i felt very energetic when i met him for the first time like you know i like i believe a lot in vibes so when i met him i was like very comfortable and i mm. wanted to meet him again it was very natural so i just went with my instincts what my heart wanted to do right your side of the story amit so yeah i mean in uh, moving forward from how we met uh, you know it was uh, yeah we had a few meetings before we kind of uh, you know decided that we were to live, live and uh, you know spend our life together mm. so we had uh, you know we had i think we met four or five times uh, you know at different locations together with family or you know mostly one on one you know talking about uh, things that we like so there was no checklist uh, it was uh, you know it was very 
free flowing and natural and uh, you know towards uh, you know meeting after meeting and you know there was there was nothing uh, negative at all like you know if you would say if you meet a person yeah, and no then if you have to decide okay this mm-hmm. is some yeah no red flag so there's something that you'll say okay you know this i like this thing about this one but i don't like this so it was not like that you know there was nothing to not like right so it was very free flowing very natural and you know i think uh, we hit it off uh, in terms of uh, you know the vibe uh, pretty quickly so that is how it was yeah so for and, you also uh, it was yeah, the vibe the, the, the yeah 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 absolutely so you know it, you just felt comfortable with someone you could talk and you could engage and you know it was there was no uh, there, there was no uh, you know a different phase or there was no filters there where uh, you know uh, we we had to uh, go through the filters to meet the person who was behind those filters so it wasn't really that it was very you know what you see is what you get i think that is something that i believed in and she also did so uh, you know it was uh, that it was it from the word go okay and how long has it been since you uh, started courting each other Nine, nine years. Nine years. Yeah, it's been nine we years. We met, yeah, we met in two thousand fourteen, and yeah, so it's been nine years. Uh, we wow. met. Mm, and can you tell me how you were at the beginning of the relationship and how you are now? Like, how have you grown as an individual <laughs> and as a couple? I really want to know. Yeah. So basically, uh, uh, both of us has not been into a relationship before we met each other, especially like, and. Uh, so both of us were exploring you know uh, exploring this and we are just going with the flow so we have been through lots of ups and downs and all that but somewhere down the line i always had that thing you know like no matter what like he is the one like you know i had that confidence in him and in our relationship like uh, us to be us being together forever and uh, but uh, it was uh, we there was nothing hmm. like you know there are people there are couples who have their couple goals they want to do yeah. this they want to do that after marriage or during the courtship period and all that but we we never had that kind of an agenda to do a lot of things we just went with the flow as i've mentioned before also okay uh, yeah so we never had a, you know i think with uh, with the time and i our relationship is growing and growing and growing uh we were uh, during our courtship also because amit also used to travel a lot and we also whenever he used to for work he used to travel and whenever he used to be in mumbai we 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 used to meet both of only both of us like he used to meet his, with, with his friends and family because wedding was like you know in 8 to 10 months so we both of us were busy with our wedding preparations as well but we enjoyed the process of doing the preparations for the wedding also we did really enjoy our wedding and uh, the best part of my our wedding was the uh, the vows that we recited hmm. i really i want to know more about that <laughs> what what were those vows <laughs> honestly i don't remember but i really enjoyed the moment of did you write the your vows. own vows no we didn't we didn't okay. but uh, we had an amazing priest uh, who is like you know, our family very close family friend and she made our wedding uh, the whole entire flow of our wedding very different and yeah, really, you said she uh, i like really you enjoyed. had i like that you had a woman yes priest. a female nice yes okay. uh, hmm. yes and we really enjoyed our uh, wedding you know she made it so nice we understood the best part was like we understood everything you know like uh what are we doing because generally there are these they just decide some mantras and you are do some prayers and all that and what done with it but this lady she made it so differently and whole heartedly she blessed us and that was you know that is what you need like, as a couple like, yeah, bless you whole heartedly to be together and all so she made it a very magical uh, event you know for us both of us so For me, it is very special. I okay. remember, like right now, also when I'm talking, I can literally feel, I can visualize each and every moment of our wedding. I, it's still mm. there. It's fresh in my memories. So, mm. Nice. Yeah. 
Nice. Amit, what was it like for you? Yeah. So, um, I mean, of course, the beginning, uh, you know, I, I, as you mentioned, we were, uh, you know, for me, I wasn't really looking out uh, for having like relationships because I know eventually we're going to get married. Uh, so if something would come up, it's something would come up, but I wasn't really like uh, hunting for a girlfriend, you know, that I want one or I, I need to be in a relationship. So I, mm. it was like that. So of course, you know, I've enjoyed my singlehood. I've been, I've traveled alone. Uh, you know, I've been able to been lucky to do that as well. And uh, with uh, you know, after marriage, we've grown as a couple. You know, we've done things together. There are things that you know I like, which she has uh, wholeheartedly accepted, and you know, learned to enjoy. And she she does enjoy as well. Uh, similarly, you know, things that she's introduced to me, it would be alternative. You know, uh, alternative therapies. You know, Ayurveda. Uh, you know meditation and all of that so those those kind of things is something that you know she brought to the table yeah. healthy food healthy living right uh, those kind of things so i wasn't really aware about all of those uh, artistic i you know artistic mm-hmm. way of looking at things uh, um, yeah. you know of course some you know the way the way i dress also sometimes is influenced by her in, the, <laughs> in a good way uh, because uh, you know she can tell me if something's not looking good or something is really mm-hmm. outdated uh, for me, that was not really a major priority, but um, so that's how we've grown together. We've we've filled. I mean, I, she's definitely filled in the gaps for me. Uh, you know, wherever uh, you know, I, I can be a better person. She's been there to help me do that. Uh, also, correct me when I'm wrong about things. Give it a different perspective. Mm. So that's how we've kind of grown. Right. I would say, you know, I've uh, she's been able to you know help me grow as a better person individually as well as as a couple. Uh, we've you know we've been able to travel together we've been able to enjoy the kind of food that she likes i've i've been able to get explore to that uh, so it's it's been it's been a wonderful experience kind of trying new things because uh, you know both of us meet we didn't have a history together but uh, you know we have a future together so that's how mm, we were able to, to explore that. each other and yeah yeah so when we were able to that's how we were able to sustain the last nine years by learning things from each other. I think that is that is how yeah. we've grown. So I think it's fair to say that uh, one of the main things that you guys did was to be open to learning, to be open to criticism, have no ego and be accepting of your differences at, at the same time. Usually like, we Absolutely. aren't like we see another person doing something and say you have to do it my way. You know, it's it's a problem. So yeah, that's pretty amazing for both of you. You just said you guys have done a lot of things together. You've also traveled together. Can you tell me a few moments from your life that you cannot forget? It could be sad, happy, anything. Anything that you enjoyed or remember. Sure. So uh, from my side, there were a few. Th- I mean, we, uh, you know, I really remember one of the things that we did a road trip uh, in the West Coast of the US. So uh, uh, that was that was something that we really enjoyed. So it was the two of us. We, uh, we booked a car from... Uh, I think from San Diego mm-hmm. and uh, we drove up to uh, San Francisco. So nice. that, that was basically, uh, you know, a three or four day road trip uh, where wow. we stopped on the way at different places, tried different things. So that is something that I remember. We really enjoyed that. Um, some of the other things that we enjoyed, uh, I mean, at least I enjoyed was, uh, you know, we, of course, uh, our trips, our regular trips to Goa now. Uh, so mm-hmm. that is something that we enjoy every, uh, you know, there are, uh, there are certain uh, you know music festivals that we try and go so that was something that uh, you know uh, i i used to enjoy and i was happy that she also enjoyed the vibe there and uh, was able to do that so those i think are a couple of things that uh, are the highlight that come up on the on my mind yeah yeah kindle what about you what do you remember so yes the, definitely that uh, the road trip that i just spoke about of mm. course it was a very beautiful experience and that was my first international trip of my that, that was the first international trip of my life and I was very like, really glad that it was with him. And uh, because uh, he uh, the way he travels is an amazing experience and I have also learned a lot about mm-hmm. travel with him, you know, how to plan a travel uh, trip, you know, nice. how how to find the uh, you know, good restaurants, or you know, everything. How to make your the entire experience of travel a more pleasurable experience? So that's something that I've learned from him. Mm. And uh, 
also uh, as i mentioned the moment uh, uh, before like the wedding moment that we started together i really enjoyed uh, I, I, that is still fresh in my memories and uh, yes uh, he, i he like you know like i explored uh, the music that he likes so you know i really enjoy the festival with him like the music festival his music favorite music festival so and i am so happy that it is a part of my life also now and, and it is it has become my my favorite too so it's i feel really good that both of us like something that uh, to a lot both of us like the same thing a lot together hmm. no doubt there are differences but uh both of us enjoy the festivals the music festivals in common together a lot and that festival also brings us uh, you know closer to each other connects we connect more so we enjoy uh, you know the music together we also love to travel together so we enjoy food together so yes this is what i have you know it has been a part of my life and i really enjoy it with him Oh, wow interesting so, but yes i can say one thing that uh, you know uh, uh, about amit is like you know he is always uh, 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 he's made uh, he's exper- he's made me experience a lot of amazing things in life and i am very glad uh, you know and i feel very blessed uh, to for that like you know but it is just because of him i have experienced many good things in life So yeah. Hmm. So I'm very grateful for that. Have you guys had do you have major arguments have you had some and how do you resolve those arguments? What's the downside of the relationship? We never had any major arguments but but yes yeah, small big thing keeps happening but you know uh uh but i you know being open to new things is what you know got me into my life and uh, uh yes the problems are in double when you get married like you know with the right partner you know they cut the cut them into half you know even the worst things can lead to something better and we know we do have arguments when it comes to relationship uh, easier isn't always an option but you know but just taking a step in the right direction is something that you have to be a little bit mindful about but uh, the best part is like we don't judge each other you know we give uh, we understand the differences uh, and we we make sure that uh, you know because we love each other so differences can be worked out you know sometimes and uh, uh, and it's like you know because we love each other uh, it's you say uh, it said like you know love is the absence of judgment so you know we major never i don't think we have ever gotten into major fights i don't remember even a single fight that we have gotten into so far okay okay is it also yeah. is yes, that sometimes we fight yeah. because uh, because yeah. uh, i'm waiting and she's getting ready so those kind of <laughs> yeah <laughs> do happen yes the small the small fights yeah, yeah little yeah Yeah, the, the typical we, one. But apart from that, we are like uh, it's, it's very chill. So if there's something that uh, if there's something that you know it's uh, not happy about or something that's bothering, we discuss it out. But we've never had like a like a blown out of proportion fight or a, a major thing when she's like, okay, now I'm going, I'm leaving, and uh, you know where to. <laughs> Those kind of things have not happened, and uh, we're glad about it. We I didn't have to. Uh, waste energies over uh, those things. So, so is that yeah. because is it true? It's because you guys have not let issues pile on, and or that you always understand each other without actually needing to sit down every single time. Because in the in eight years that you've been together, I'm pretty sure there must be heartbreaks and disappointments. I mean, without that, it's not a relationship. But if you Absolutely. haven't had a major fight that means you're doing something right and i want to really dig into that and find out what that is is it do you guys have talking sessions are there any rituals that you do together what what do you do i want to know more yeah so uh so one of the things that is i mean from my side we try to keep uh, you know realistic expectations as well as get it like you know we don't have 
we try to get rid of negativity so those are the things that you know we try and not uh, put into uh, get into all comparison so it's just naturally it's not like right. something that we are uh, you know we are we have a checklist and we work towards that but it's not it's not like that but there are certain things that you know we've i think grown over the years now we understand each other so we know what are our strengths our weaknesses uh, you know if mm, sometimes yeah. uh, sometimes if for example if i if you know if one of us snaps at each other it's not because we mean it because something else must be bothering because we live you know we live in a competitive world we live in a city which needs to keep us on on top of our game so you know there are a lot of outside factors that could affect our uh, relationship as well but you know we keep it simple we keep it real we understand that things happen so i think that that has helped us uh, you know maintain this uh, kind of a relationship okay kinjal what yeah. is it like we have rituals i think kinjal can share some yeah. rituals yeah yeah she looks like she sounds yes. like the ritual person yes uh, well, before <laughs> that i would also like to uh, say something like hmm. yes uh, we we may, uh, you know uh, the relationship like it may sound like you know it's going to be complicated but at the end it's going to it's it's very satisfying even if we fight also on small small thing you know i i know that uh, you know what keeps me going and gets me uh, through the toughest time is the time that he's there even we even if we fight i know he's there you know for me it's all on him like he uh, his presence is there and that is something that even if i fight with him uh, his presence still matters a lot to me if he's not around then i go crazy and i have to resolve things you know that way so his energy his presence around me really matters a lot from lot to me and uh, yeah uh, coming to which was uh, we really uh, we love to have our breakfast together especially have our coffee time or chai time together Nice. we meditate together in the morning not every day but uh, we trying to do it almost every day so we meditate together after we wake up and we are in bed and we meditate together then we both of us together we love to explore healthy food then we also uh, try to celebrate like you know we make uh, birthdays and anniversaries a special uh, thing for us uh, especially during our anniversaries we try to you know uh it just be the two of us and you know spend time with each other uh, and uh, try to travel even if it is for two days or 10 days or 20 days doesn't matter we make sure that you know we are traveling and there is some the now this goa thing ha- is also happening once in a year we try to go go try nice. to travel to goa it's a tradition of sorts for a week yeah it's kind of a tradition so these are the things we yeah, are and one of the best thing is like we really enjoy i was never a south indian food fan mm. though my entire family is but amit is a big uh, idli fan he literally blushes when you know you <laughs> ask him you want to have idli and he can eat all day every day the entire year you just give him idli four times every day he can eat it happily and mm. i feel so happy that now even i have started loving idli so much that uh, we both of us enjoy having idli together and we make sure like you know we keep going it just happens the plan just happens to that's the benefit of living in matunga we just go to some nice south indian restaurant mm. and we enjoy idli it's now. like a idli date for us <laughs> nice so so these are some basic rituals that we follow you know we do we have together So, okay so i i from both of your answers i have found time to be a recurring theme but you're both entrepreneurs and you're both busy all the time so how do you find time and do you also find alone time yes we do uh, uh both of us like we uh, being in bombay it's difficult but we make sure at least on sundays on weekends and uh, every almost every day before sleeping we spend some time together uh no matter what sometimes it happens see, because we also have to balance out uh, having our own space is also important i feel in a relationship uh uh but uh, uh we make sure that we have we do spend time with each other by just going out like as i mentioned there are few rituals that we follow so uh, we have in our life so you know that help us to spend time with each other yeah so, so generally and morning is something is... that we work 
uh, you know mornings uh, mornings be something try and work together and uh, can just okay. how you were saying something. yeah yeah please continue so yeah, formal so, after 8 years Shut no, we are not moment. formal. It's just <laughs> like both of us want. No, no, it's kidding. not being formal. It's just like we, we always want each other to express themselves. Yeah, we want, like, nice you know, we give chance to each other always. Like, yeah, you know. respect and yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, we do get alone time. So in that aspect, uh, you know, I've, uh, you know, I, I have a, a, a kind of, you know, we have a few friends, a couple of my friends whom we try and meet up. Uh, they live in different parts of the city. uh so we kind of try and meet up for a movie it could be a you know it could be a movie that kinjal wouldn't typically enjoy it could be a complete mm. action or you know a, a superhero movie or you know some intense uh, stuff that uh, something uh, you know uh, something that me and my uh, guy friends we enjoy so we try to do that so that is something that she's very okay with uh, you know it's it's not like that you know why are you going for a movie without me so there are certain things that of course we understand that you know we enjoy and we need to do that uh, so that's when uh, we do get uh, you know i get alone time as well as uh, time with my friends so those kind of things are nice. there it's not like i don't think it's important i mean coming to a question is i don't think it's important to sustain so it's not like if i don't get alone time this is not going to work out it's not like that but uh, it just naturally happens there are certain things that uh, you know we understand that uh, you know we we like or you know both of us Uh, maybe one of us like one of us doesn't like so those things those kind of things naturally just progresses but it's not like i don't think it's it's important to sustain that if i don't get this uh, the relationship is going to be in a crisis mode it's not like that it's not like that it just happens naturally we don't have to you know work for it like we don't have to make an effort to do all these things but yeah it just happens naturally because okay. i am a kind of a person i i am a kind of a person who definitely needs me time i really appreciate having that and i understand how it feels to have a me time and uh, and i also want him also to enjoy so we don't have any uh, like you know so basically we do respect each other's space and he also does the same thing so hmm. yeah okay. that's something that we have in common so it's okay, okay. Okay so having said all of that um this is a question i haven't asked uh, in this podcast for a long time and i want to ask you guys because you sound like pretty sorted mature and amazing i want to know how important or how much bollywood has influenced your idea for relationship and what do you think about the concept of do jism ek jaan and all of that that you have to that we are fed through movies Uh, honestly uh for me bollywood is not uh, you know what you see bollywood in bollywood it's it's just uh, i mean it's not a reality for me i don't believe in the romance that bollywood shows people i believe like you know every couple has his or her own journey okay and uh, it's uh, you know uh, every cup like you know somehow i don't believe in those just some ek jaan and all that hmm. it's just like, like you know when it comes to love it has to be pure and you as long as you understand each other you are matured enough you know to uh, i mean as long as you understand each other is enough you know for me and uh, what your partner wants what are your partner's expectations what are your expectations and you come to a common point where both of us both of you are very happy you know is what love is you so know. you can be individual uh, i don't have your own traits and have your own things but still be in love still yeah. be in a relationship and it's still okay yes i honestly because this bollywood and all i feel it's very artificial <laughs> i yeah. mean it's yeah, not I a reality agree. it is absolutely yeah. not a reality because and if you see you know when like if you are influenced by bollywood uh, you know the romance then definitely you are going to create problems in your own life so yeah and which is a big problem right yeah. like from fashion yeah. to this bollywood does influence our lives and we might not know how yeah. it just happens and then there is there is this expectation yeah. spoken to a few people they want an srk in their lives like they want that kind of 
uh, <laughs> nonsense. And at the same time, the toxic behavior traits or like stalking or not taking no for an answer also seep into our lives from those films. Yeah. Which is why yeah. Yeah, it's a huge red flag for me that we go the Bollywood way. But we live in a city yeah. or in, in the country where it's... Yeah, so at the end of the day, that is, I mean, that is entertainment. Yeah. So, you know, you don't have to mix entertainment with actual yeah. love, companionship. Exactly. They do show things that are there. I mean, there are certain... I mean, very few movies that show the real side. Uh, uh, I think there was a uh, Shah Rukh Khan movie uh, with Alia, but uh, I forgot the name. Dear Zindagi. Uh, but, uh, I mean, Dear Zindagi, yeah. So there was, yeah. there was a different kind of a uh, love story that they depicted yeah. there. That is more, I mean, I don't think that's typical Bollywood. Yeah, okay. so that that is something that is something that is, I think, could be uh, kind of a real world kind of thing. But apart from that, if you look yeah. at other kind of movies, they just put in a lot of pressure on couples on you know how to be or how to behave or you know yeah. uh, set a lot of expectations higher than what is kind of achievable so yeah yeah it's pretty cool like i think i've been referencing that movie one or two times in the podcast because there are a few interesting things non toxic things and that i said like when i think of you guys and how you've met so many people what kindrel said that she met so many guys before she met you i remember something that was said in the movie which was like you have even while buying a chair you try out so many different chairs one is comfortable <laughs> yeah. one is in your budget one is not and then finally you find the one that's just right so yeah, yeah. it has some pretty interesting things too yeah okay yeah. Now, um, I want to understand one big issue and I have had differing opinions on this podcast about that. Some people say don't expect. Some say how do you survive without expecting? So what is your opinion on expectations and how do you manage them? Like, are they, are so, they a problem for you? Uh, do they hurt you? Or are you okay to have them? Honestly, initially, I definitely, because... Uh, I never had an experience of what a relationship is like. And in the beginning of our marriage, I definitely had a whole set of expectations from him or from, you know, how the life should, married life should be like and this and that. But then with time, I understood, you know, these expectations causes problems. Of course, if you have an expectation that means, you know, something that means a lot to you, communicate with your partner, you know, and I'm sure, like, you know, it's after all, see, the, it's the love that wins, uh, that, you know, that l- wins between you and your partner. So if you have an expectation, your partner will definitely understand, but don't have, you know, too many and unreasonable expectations from your partner or from mm-hmm. yourself or from your relationship. Yeah. Okay. Because if you want to make your life smooth and happy, just uh you know don't have so many expectations from yourself or from the relationship or from the partner. Yes, there are there are few set of expectations, there are few small big little things that really matters to you. Definitely do communicate. So I always made a mistake before, like you know, I couldn't communicate well. It was not that I was not comfortable, it was just me. Then I realized with time and I have understood that how important the communication is. You know. So you we okay. must communicate and our expectations, but this the expectations has to be reasonable enough. You cannot change, don't change your partner, you know, unreasonably and for just to meet your own needs and requirements. Okay, I what think. about so, what about the expectation of reciprocation? I did this for you. Why aren't you doing this for me? Does that happen with uh, both of you? And Amit, I like you to answer first. Sure. So, sure. So, I mean, coming, uh, I'll, I'll answer. I'll talk about expectations and reciprocation. So, what I mean, it's, it's, it's to be in Zen mode to have, uh, you know, no expectations at all. I mean, then you've reached the epitome of uh, life, and you probably don't need anything else. Then, (laughs) but I think uh, coming to realistic people, we are still, you know, simple, humble people, and. Uh, expectations is a part of uh, you know who we are and absolutely there would yeah. I mean there are some expectations that that are there and in a, and in a relationship of course those are going to come out because you you are uh, with someone whom you expect a lot of things from you know simple 
being, you know, if, if someone's sad or someone's unhappy or somebody's crying or unwell, you know, they, they want that emotional support as well as someone to be there with, uh, with one. So, you know, those kind of expectations are there and I think should be there uh, because that's how, you know, people come together where you are spending the good and the bad uh, together. So that's will that will what that's what will make a relationship stronger. And what Kijal said makes sense. Also, yeah. that you know, expectations about with realistic expectations is something that you know we we look at. And uh, you know, reciprocation. If I have done something for you, you should do something for me. I think that that becomes uh, that becomes toxic if there is no communication. So you know, if if there is if it's in a fun way, you know that yeah, I'm gonna make breakfast for you today, but. Uh, this is what I wanted to make lunch. Like, you know, my favorite mm. thing is something that you make for me as a lunch. So that, that, that kind of reciprocation is fun and that's connected to love. But if you expect something and don't communicate it, that's, you know, yeah, built in inside that, you know, I did this, but yeah, I did this, but then she's not doing this for me, even yeah. though I did this for her. Right. Those kind of things could result in, uh, you know, baggage that could come out in different ways later on. So I think reciprocation is there, uh, should be there, but it has to be communicated in case the other person does not understand uh, mm. to keep uh, you know, a relationship going. So I think that's fine. I mean, it, it, it's reciprocation. If you look at it that way, it's still a part of love where you're doing something for someone, uh, you know, but uh, and you want them to do something for you, which will make you happy. So if you know that, it's fine. Okay, interesting. So that brings me to, I think, my last question for the podcast. And this is a tricky one. And it's also the most important one, I think. So if you were sitting uh, with someone who's just gotten into a relationship, what would be the three do's and three don'ts that you would tell them? And each of you have to have your own answers. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Okay. Uh, so for me, if, if I'm... Uh, like I would always say definitely do use uh, communication, open to have communication, like, you know, communicate well. This is something that I've really learned from my own experience. And then also, you know, give your uh, give yourself and your partner this, a space and grow individually and grow together for sure. Uh, do express appreciation for the little things that your partner does. And uh, also, very important, do align your schedules, match up your schedules to spend time together. Uh, like, these are the do's that I really, hmm. uh, do's that I really would like to tell every couple. And uh, don't, like, don't try to change your partner for your, to meet your own expectations and all. And uh, don't, don't skip the uh, don't skip uh, the sexual health conversation as well because that is also a very important part of your life as very a couple. True. Yes, and uh, also uh, don't. I think I have only two so far that I can. Think that's of, okay. Like, that's I okay. Whatever comes naturally. Like spontaneously. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amit, now you are on the spot. Sure. So. Um, yeah, so I have some do's. Uh, so basically, you have to, I think you have to try out new things, you know, uh, together. So if there are some things that uh, that are there, I mean, new things for you, uh, which your partner may have done, that's also fine. Like you're doing it for the first time, but your partner has done it. So at least you all have, you know, those kind of things. So you have to keep an open mind and try out new things. Uh, yes, you know, very important. Uh, the other thing, yeah, and the other, you should also keep your friendships alive. So, you know, you mm. do have a partner now, but, uh, you know, you also have, uh, you know, don't focus all your energies on that one person uh, that could be overwhelming for the other person. But if the other person is fine, they're like, you know, yeah, I want to be the center of your attention. Then, yeah, no problem with that. But otherwise, if you should, you should also keep your uh, friendships going on. Uh, you know, don't, don't, uh, you know, don't miss out on that. I think that also helps you learn with other experiences and, uh, you know, uh, Show appreciation, you know, wherever there is, if someone, if, if your partner is doing something for you, something good, uh, show that appreciation because over time things could happen where, you know, you get more comfortable with each other, where you stop appreciating one another uh, because, you know, you know, you know, as, as you're a life partner now. So, you know, sometimes you do take things for granted. So instead of that, you should, 
you know show show appreciation like wherever uh wherever Know, yeah. These are certain do's, uh, and you said there are three don'ts, right? So I would think yeah. about don'ts, but uh, I think one thing is you know don't compare. You know there could be you yes. know there could be comparisons that could come into your head. So I think that is something that is not there because each and every individual comes with uh, mm. their own experiences, their own things. So yeah, not to not to compare uh, is something that is there. Uh, another thing I could think of is uh, don't get into the past. You know they could. there could be uh, every everyone would have their own histories and all of that but if if uh, a couple is getting together to plan the future uh, it only makes sense to just talk about the future rather than get into the past because you know yeah. uh, we all make we all make mistakes i'm sure Absolutely. Uh, it's it's part of the learning curve so if if there are certain things don't carry that baggage along uh, whatever is in the past that's that's gone and uh, yeah and yeah i think that is something that uh, that i can think of um if there's a third don't uh, you know if you know don't give in if if there are something that you can help your partner improve with uh, i think that is something that you could also consider but i think these are the things that i can think of right now yeah both of you were brilliant this was such an amazing chat thank you really thank you for being on the show thank oh you. thank you it was Thanks it was to amazing you. to <laughs> yeah it was amazing for us also to Uh, answer some of those questions some of them yeah. some of the questions something that we don't think about in our uh, in daily our day to day lives yeah, lives. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. absolutely okay thank you so much have a nice day thank, thank you. you bye 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 and yet again i'm left with 100 questions even after asking so many questions to a guest on my podcast there was a lot to learn there thank you kindra thank you amit Don't forget to tune in next week for another episode of PS After I Love You. Keep loving, keep growing. Bye. This podcast is live pretty much everywhere on Spotify, on Amazon Music, on Apple Podcasts, on Audible, on Gaana, on Savan, on Wink, and pretty much any other podcasting platform we could think of. Share it with a friend that you think just has to listen to this podcast. And if you don't mind, give the Offspin team a like, maybe a subscribe on their Instagram page. Keep listening to Offspin content and keep listening. You just listen to PS After I Love You, an Offspin original created and hosted by Heer Khan. Post production by Arif Chagla, Rajesh Ravi, Anand Krishnan, Sandeep Banerjee, Krishant Das, and Harshleen Israni. The opinions expressed in the show are personal to the guests and the host and do not necessarily represent the opinions of the producer or the platform. This show does not intend to defame and denigrate any individual or organization in India or outside. The show is created for entertainment purposes only. It does not encourage smoking, drinking or any kind of substance use. It may contain the use of harsh language that may be considered offensive, rude or profane by the listeners. It may also contain incidents that mention or describe mental health issues, casteism, suicide and violence. Listeners are advised to use their discretion.